Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Secret Dump Podcast, yes. And we have a very big announcement to make. This episode is, is Secret Dump. 100. I can't even believe it's been 100. Why, we, didn't, why didn't we get a cake, Moshe, from one of our amazing, from, from milk, our Milk Bar sponsor? We should have. We should have gotten Milk Bar to make us a 100th Secret Dump episode celebratory cake but i will say when we started this secret dump do you know why we started the secret dump do you remember no the reason that we started the secret dump was people obviously love the secrets but also it was when the pandemic was in full swing we thought it would be nice to give the listeners an extra episode a week and we have regretted it every week <laughs> since because it's twice the work, but no, you're it's worth it. We have so many secrets and we couldn't get to everybody. You're worth it, guys. You are worth the extra episode. Two episodes a week for our lovely honeymooners who have been supporting us on Patreon. And we love that so much. And if, by the way, you want more secrets in your life, every week we release an extended Patreon secret dump with five instead of three secrets. So how about that? Love it. I love it as well. Happy 100th secret dump, everybody. Um, should we just jump right in and do some secrets? Oh, I was just going to tell you one thing. One thing I've noticed about our child yeah. that I thought would, would be funny to talk about. Yeah. Is like, I'll tell you if it is. She's so like, I try to get her to watch PBS kids uh -huh. and I put it on. And the second she hears it, she's like, next flicks, next flicks. <laughs> and then like, it's the same thing she does when like, cause everyone's like, Oh, just, you know, put water in her juice. And the second she sees me going for the water when her juice, she's like, no, get that out of there. I mean, there's she's an, like so on it. There's an exec at Nextflix right now <laughs> listening to that that just busted the fattest nut. Like, that's what they want. They want kids to be like, I want Nextflix. Well, here's and then I read this article in The New York Times this weekend and about this show called Coco Melon, which mm -hmm. is truly mm -hmm. evil. Mm -hmm. And the way that they get the kids hooked, which I don't know if Nextflix does yet, but they basically have like a factory where they put the kid in the room mm -hmm. and then show it different things like show it. Um, they show it their show, Coco Melon. They have Coco Melon on one screen. And then on b little screens down in the corner, they, they have people like pouring coffee, making stuff. cereal. And then anytime the kid will go look at the boring stuff. Anytime the kid looks away from Coco Melon and gets distracted. They make a little note and see at what, what point in the show. And then now they've, and Just, they'll remove that part. And now they figured out how to make these shows so it's all stuff that are, the kids are the most into. Like, for example, buses are really big with kids. Mm -hmm. Not not red buses. They have to be yellow buses. And then what kids also, they said, kids never look away at minor injuries. So you'll <laughs> see this, like, this cartoon of, like, a bus that has, like, little, like, scrapes on its face. Like, it's a it's a talking bus. Oh, this is the ultimate yes. attention grabber is an injured bus. Yes, they start making these ultimate attention grabbers for your kids to watch. Wow. And, so and don't is, they call the uh, the boring screen, like, the dist distracto distracto monitor or something disturbing like that i don't remember it's like dr strange love it is pretty creepy though and so like you know trying to trick your kids if anyone has any good tips i'll tell you hot what tips i'll tell you what i don't like about netflix what is when i come into the room but i'm not saying netflix does that i'm saying Coco that's Melon Coco, is, Melon. Coco Melon is on netflix i don't think it is it's on youtube it's on netflix oh it is oh yeah oh, okay. it sure is but uh, i don't like when i come in and she's watching a hot netflix episode mm -hmm. and i'll walk in i'll be like hey honey and she does not respond i go hello i know and you're does like hello respond. hello and then i'll go get the remote turn the tv off and there'll be a second there's about a second pause before she goes uh, what what happened? Yeah, they figured out her algos. She and there's probably is, like a, a beat up bus singing to her. Mm, maybe I should dress as a beat up bus and she'll pay more attention to me. Well, I don't know what to do about it. Well, um, Netflix, Netflix has its secrets. It can't be good, right? To just mm -hmm. to, to have your kid be um, only the attention grabbing thing. Like that doesn't seem like a real way to use your brain. Indeed, not good. Okay. All but right. But she hey, is you know reading what? Moby Dick. That's true. She just she, said, she looked at me the other day. She said, I love Melville. All right. He, All right. She, she said he paints a picture with words. All right. Anyway, uh, Netflix has its secrets and we have ours. And let's play a couple. Hi, Moshe, Natasha. Uh, <laughs> yeah, secret time. I wonder how many guys do this as well. And it's a pee in sinks. 
in Ew. any washroom that's just like, you know, one person at a time, lock the door, it's just a Come sink on, and man. a toilet, just solo washroom. Like, I'll pee in the sink every time. It's the perfect height. It doesn't splash everywhere. I don't want to sit on a public toilet and I don't want to stand and pee in the toilet because no matter if you lift the seat or not, it's splashing everywhere when it hits what? the water. It's and it's not, not really splashing in the sink. To do it that way. At home, I'll sit on the toilet um, more than I would pee in the sink. But in a public washroom, pee in the sink every time. It's way more efficient and clean. And For only that, you. That. Thank you. He's pissing where people wash their hands. Well... Yeah, you've done it. I can tell you have I like this know, kind of like no, resolve. I have, I have peed in a sink, but the part that freaked me out about the secret is that he said every time. <laughs> I, I, the only time I've ever peed in a sink is out of desperation, not just every time. It's like that's his default. I think it's, that's what I mean. Like you, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Acting as if people are watching. Like you don't want to ever put yourself. First of all, he's in a public toilet peeing in the sink. The odds that someone's going to open the door and you're going to have an embarrassing interaction are pretty high. I had a bad experience. You're probably going to hate me telling this story. I probably oh, no. shouldn't tell this story. Ah, eh, maybe I won't. Okay, maybe I will. I was in a public uh, toilet and I was like, "You're going to hate this story," but I had. I was just. It was an emergency situation, and it was like public toilet you shit in the sink no, no it was one of these no stall have an ass toilets you know and mm. it was looking nasty mm-hmm. i think like there was like a whole like unhoused village that used that toilet you know <laughs> and so i was like shit i gotta i gotta papoo and so i did that thing where you do the yoga uh, chair pose you know you know what i'm talking about so you don't sit on the on the yeah. toilet and i did my thing and i left and there was like a line of got of like uh, you know of, of kind of intransients and the guy comes in after me and he starts screaming at me. He's like, you shit all over the goddamn fucking toilet. And I was like, uh, I had thought that I had not, but I had. I had like chat on the toilet seat. And he started, I was like, basically it was seven. Sometimes when you have instincts, Moshe, like that t- I might not like something, don't you should go with that. Yeah, I'm regretting it. I can't believe you didn't look, take that I was last trying to get. Look. I was trying to run. I was trying to run out of there. Maybe I had a maybe I had a subconscious suspicion that I had done exactly what the guy was yelling at me about. And he ran away from it, and I ran away from it. And he's kind of like when you drop something, your instinct is to run away from it. I did, as drop opposed something. to pick it up. I dropped a deuce, and I and I was running away from it. And the guy, this guy, was screaming at me, and then I was like, "Oh my, oh God, I'm sorry," and I started cleaning it up. And then, but then my ego flared up, and I was like, "You know, you don't need to yell at me." And he was oh like, my God, oh. you see, <laughs> that's where you just walk away <laughs> he goes, with your tail between your he legs. He goes, "I'm sorry, man. I'm having a bad day," and I was. Of course he is. He just tried to go to the bathroom and there's <laughs> shit on the toilet seat. Oh my God, Moshe. And I said sorry too. And then we, we shook hands. We shook bare hands. Well, you really did? No, we didn't shake hands. I was going to say, that's the time to not shake hands. All right. I regret telling that story, but I don't regret hearing another secret. Hi, Moshe and Natasha. Um, Moshe said something this past week on, on the secret dump about how some people deserve to pay and that kind of made me realize that I have a little secret to share that's really fun um, because I agree with you. Um, I'm a barista and uh, baristas will do this thing that it's not like with uh, waiters uh, that'll sit in your food or anything. We're not going to do anything gross to that, to uh, like us like that. But um, if you ever disrespect a barista, you are going to get decaf coffee. If that's just I've heard what's going to happen. Every barista I've ever mm. known or worked with has done this to people who are assholes. Um, and it feels so good. Mm. And at the same time, it's really harmless. Like, you know, they're not going to get sick. It's not disgusting. It's just they're going to feel sleepy in a, uh, a little while. And the coffee that they spent money on uh, is going to do absolutely nothing. Mm. So, uh, yeah, just a reminder that when you're ordering coffee, keep that in mind. All right. Bye. I love that. Who's a dick to their barista? A lot of people. Really? Didn't you have somebody be a dick to you as a barista once at Burning Man? Yeah, but that's a very specific situation. I'm just saying, some people treat people like shit. I, but I got a workaround. I got a little loophole for this uh, uppity barista. Yeah. I, I happen to be a sociopath that's <laughs> caffeine sensitive. So I'll go in and I'll be like, hey, lady, make me my goddamn latte. 
and I want it with caffeine. But really, I'm caffeine sensitive and I need a decaf. So I get oh, both of my needs met. I get my decaf latte and I get to abuse um, an hourly worker. Do you pretty think, awesome. Do you think people ever get an extra shot of decaf? Um, like, you know, that like is a funny I question. get a latte. And then Moshe, has anyone tried to order Starbucks online? If you order it to come to you, it is extremely confusing. There are so each drink has about nine pages of things you can choose. Up to 96 extra shots. That is true. 96 extra shots. I don't know how they would fit that in a tall. Have you noticed that, by the way, Natasha? What? They call their drinks these bizarre names. Like I'm just saying tall, it's weird. It's a, a small is a tall and a, a large is a venti. It's like, hello, I don't live in Italy. I'm just saying they need to work on their interface. Well... They need to work on... Or we need to work on not wasting money... Unionization. ...ordering coffee delivery. But sometimes we need to do that in the morning because our daughter doesn't have food for her lunch. Right. We buy groceries at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play another secret. Hi, guys. This is my secret. Uh, so when I was about eight years old, uh, my physical and sexual uh, education was not the best. And I had seen in the movies that, you know, sex is basically just a humping action. Um, didn't know any more than that. So I uh, decided one day to hump my cat. So I <laughs> just sort of leaned on top of her and made like a up and down motion. Um, obviously, no type of penetration in any form. Um, but then I got really nervous when I learned about pregnancy and <laughs> I was, uh, now that would be freaked cute out for nine months that I was going to produce some sort of cat human hybrid. I think at around the month five mark, I realized that I would probably be showing signs by now of a pregnancy, um, and calm down. All right. That's my secret. Thanks. Bye. Damn. An eight year old had a five month anxiety attack about giving birth to a kitten. <laughs> Wait, I have a question, Moshe. What would you do if you walked in on your child humping the dog? Um, would you be like, because I would be like, don't do that. Uh huh. And then that would probably be the wrong thing to say. I would laugh and say, what are you doing? And she'd say, I'm humping the cat. And I would say, well, we probably don't do that to cats because it might hurt them. You're like, just do it to furniture. I would say, you know, if you need to do that, do that privately, but not with the cat because it could hurt them. That's what I'd say. Oh, that's cute. Which which system do you think is better? Just screaming. Screaming don't do no, that? I, by the way, I don't think my systems are good. This is just what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, I that would be my shock of like, ah, don't do that. I don't think I would do that because I just, I am really aware of the idea that it's very easy, especially early in a kid's life, to give them a complex I about know. sexuality. I don't want to do that either. I don't either. That's why when I met you, I was like, oh, you'll be a good dad like to take over like, you know, once all the hard work's done. I got can, that like, hippie thing going on. Yeah, you know how to like talk to them in do the right way. Do you think? Oh, that's nice to hear. Yeah, you're an excellent communicator. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. You're a really good actor. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a... You're a good comedic actor. <laughs> you are. Thank you. Honey. You're great at, at, at acting. Thanks. And stand up. And you were really well-dressed as well. All right. Well, listen, if you want to leave a secret, give us a call at 213-222-8686. Two one one three three two 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 eight eight six eight oh, wait. Yeah. And if you'd like to uh, be on our Patreon and get the long version of this episode, if you're not already, go to Patreon slash Endless Honeymoon. Find us on YouTube. Rate us. Subscribe there. Go find us wherever you find your podcasts, and we will find you wherever we come touring a your way and there's a lot of new content on the horizon with our patreon we're very excited about it I'm we, excited. Are, we are spending more time on our podcast because we have you to think about and we want to really be giving you all that we can it's been a wonderful hundred episodes and we love you we love you all dearly goodbye and oh natasha I yes forgot, i forgot to tell you i also love you i also love you too